welcome to the Serving It Up podcast. This is episode eight, where we uncover everything about individuals through the three pillars of eat good, look good, and live great. And today on our podcast is the perfect real life example of what it means to be beauty and the beast. She's an international supermodel and influencer, working with brands like ST Lauder, Sick Kids, UFC, Champion, and she's a sneakerhead, health and fitness advocate. Sure, her husband is an MMA fighter, Misha, but she herself is also a beast on the runway, behind the camera, and in life. Summer 2018, she took a road trip to move from Toronto to Las Vegas, and 400 kilometers later, she was diagnosed with breast cancer. In January 2019, she began a new chapter of her life. She's a good friend, a badass, and fellow cancer survivor, Brittany Churchill. Welcome to the podcast. Hey. <laughs> you? Awesome, Wallace. Thank you for that intro. <laughs> Absolutely welcome. You deserved every single part of it. But I wanted, before we get started on all this stuff, I always ask people on our podcast to give us a dish or a, food or a drink that you'd like to have you know, while we're doing the podcast, because Brilliant Seven always says, tell me what you eat, and I'll tell you what you are. So you, you're one of our first guests that have actually given me a full recipe. So I've made your recipe. Do you want to share what it is for everybody? Yeah, so I made sweet potato home fries. I've got mine here, and I've got onion on top. And um, I think you used the white onions. Did you add green too? I did. I have the green onions, I have all that, but I took my sweet potatoes and I turned them into french fries versus the fries. Uh, but yeah, so wanna tell everybody sort of what's in, in it just real quick? Yeah, so um, I don't have the exact measurements, but I spiced them up. First I um, put olive oil on them so that they cook nice and they get a little bit crispy on the outside. Um, and I like to reheat them too. And I find like sometimes the next day they're better because they're even crispier. Um, and I put cinnamon, oregano, parsley, um, garlic, salt and pepper and did I say cinnamon cinnamon and, and a little chili flakes yes that's that's the kicker I really love like the spice of cinnamon yeah. and something like sweet potato and I think this is a great example of pretty much you and like I said um we talk about tell me what you eat and tell me what you are I think that a lot of times what someone eats represents them so this dish has a lot to do with what your current lifestyle is and what you're about uh we'll get right totally. into that so We'll get into that. And the first thing I want to say is, let's talk about how we met. That's, a, I think, a very big reason of how we, how we sort of connect so well and where we are to right now. Um, do you want me to talk about it or do you want to talk about it? Well, okay, I'll tell you. I'll, I'll tell them, like, how we connected. Okay, you do your story and then I'll do my story outside. Okay, so... I was online sharing my story about my cancer bottle and I was right at the beginning of, uh, of treatment. So I just found out I needed chemotherapy and everything. And I think I went through like my first session and you reached out to me on Instagram and you DM'd me and you were basically telling me um, your story, what you went through um, having cancer in your eye at such a young age and like how far you've come and like you have been, I guess like 10 years, I think by then. 10 years or was it longer well we met each other at 2018 so uh, uh it's 13 years this year wow like 10 10 11 yeah. yeah so you're over 10 years like past kind of like getting me to look ahead and letting me know that um like i was gonna be fucking invincible after this <laughs> or something like that i forget that. exactly what you said yeah because i remember i I never knew about you, but you were from Toronto. Misha's from, you know, Toronto. You guys trained here. And then I think it was from the fitness industry. Someone posted your story or your post. And then I was... We really had common. We had yes, mutual we had fitness friends. friends. Exactly. And yeah. um, I, saw the, I saw you post something. And from, it was something that just pulled me into saying, hey, I wanted to reach out and just be like... Because you were like right in the beginning, like you said, just started. There it seemed like a little bit like uncertainty of like, don't know what really is there. I was like... And I really, I remember exactly what I, what I wrote in the first part of the DM too, because I was like, I really mm -hmm. wanted to help. I wanted to reach out and just like, be like, give you my experience and a little bit of encouragement. And I know yeah. I was like, this girl is like a supermodel. So she's probably not going to open up anybody's just DMs. So I remember I wrote, this is not a dick pic. I was yeah. like, 
He's open. It's not a yeah, date. yeah. It was something like fun. It actually, it's like I like trusted you off the get go or something from that, which is bizarre. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, I hope she sees this. I just wanted to tell her, you know, that there's certain things that you can go through or what were like important things or stuff. And sort of that's how we started. Right? Yeah. We met and then you invited me out to your shoot. Yes. You, um, so you came to, I had just walked Toronto Fashion Week bald and for my first chemotherapy look, I did um, just like a last minute sort of spider web on my head, which was amazing. But then um, Fade Gods, Dwight from, he, Dwight, he's Fade God from Miami Fades. He offered to do like a really cool design for my second look and my hair had just started falling out. So I still had enough hair to do a hair design. So he offered to do it and I thought it would be cool to like meet you somewhere um, while I was, you know, still feeling good and in the city. And so I invited you to come there, which turned out to be awesome. You brought us, you brought everyone hot sauce. And Dwight thought you're awesome. And my mom just thought you're the sweetest. And it shout was- out to, Shout out to your mom, shout out to Annie. Annie yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah. that was cool. And that was really cool. That's how sort of how it started. That's really yeah. how it started and we've connected ever since. And it's been- Yeah, we were friends right away. Like as soon yeah. as we met, it was really nice. It was well, like beautiful. That first day, it was like a, like a, what is it? At least four or five hour shoot. Like the whole shebang. I think he spent six hours doing my hair. It was insane. It was it was so cool. It was cold as well. I remember it was winter. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So now that we've gotten that and sort of figured out where we are and like we'll let everybody know how we met, a little bit about you. Let's get right into the stuff. Let's get right into eat good, look good, live great, food, health and fitness, lifestyle. Yeah. All right, let's do it, Britt. So first off, you live in Sin City. You live in Los yeah. Angeles. Um, from Toronto, but you live in Las Vegas. And for, what I wanted to ask is, living in Las Vegas, what are some of the biggest tourist traps and local secrets when it comes to food? Because I know you're a foodie, as much as you're a fitness model and all yeah. that, but you're a big foodie. Well, I like I am a foodie, but I don't go out to eat that much. I especially when I'm at home in Toronto, I will have to say I go out to eat a lot more, and I know all the good places. In Las Vegas, I know that there's great places to eat, but I've only tried a few things. And I have to say my favorite is, I think it's called Yellowtail. It's got some good sushi, but also has steak. And it's at the Bellagio Hotel. And I love the Bellagio. I just, it always has beautiful decor and everything like that. Um, but I usually make food at home. Like my husband loves it when I cook. And he goes out to eat a lot when I'm not home. <laughs> so then let's get right into that then. If we're, if we're yeah. going to go into that way, uh, we'll segue into where did your love for cooking come from? Um, I've always enjoyed cooking, but I think that after going through battling cancer, especially, and seeing and hearing about people that have survived stage four cancers and doing it through eating, like health and fitness always went together with eating, right? But you know, if you work out hard, you think you can just like eat whatever you want. And like, I was, I've been guilty of that too. And I just have like a different kind of guilt when I eat. It's not even like guilt. It's like, okay, is this worth it? You know, or should I just make something that tastes amazing and is really healthy? So I always try to pick like something that I can make that's healthy. Cause if I make it, I can make it good. But yeah. if I go out to eat something that's healthy, it doesn't always taste good. And it's expensive. And if it tastes good, it's expensive. Right? Yes, because I know a few places. Like one place in LA called Crossroads. It's okay. amazing. It's vegan. You could get sliders that you wouldn't even know aren't meat. It's delicious. But yeah, it's going to cost you. Uh, for sure. <laughs> you brought up something that I've always wanted to talk to you because it affected my life when I was dealing with cancer, which was... Did you, ch did, when you had cancer, did you change your nutrition? Did you change your diet? Did you have to cut foods out and certain things like that? Yeah, I just started thinking a lot more about it. Like, I, it was instinct. Um, not that I ever ate really bad or anything, but I've always had a sweet tooth, like a major sweet tooth. Like, there is times when I go to parties and just eat, like, the desserts, you know? Um, 
so I try not to do that anymore. Like I still enjoy things and you gotta live, but, um, everything in moderation. And when I first got diagnosed, I didn't eat for like two days because I was so worried, um, you know, that I was going to do something to sort of like speed up the growth of the cancer or something. So I started my research on that right away. And, you know, depending on what kind of cancer you have, the way you feed your body can be healing. So I didn't want to eat a lot of meat that had um, hormones in it because mine was hormone positive. Um, so I started doing more vegan, but then I went to a naturopath um, and my iron was really down. So I was incorporating really great quality meats. And I actually have a friend who lives um, on that, like a Mennonite area out in Aylmer here. Yes, yes. And he would, yeah, he would bring me like the best stuff. Like he knew the animal. And so I'm not by any means a vegan, but I've done the vegan diet before. I just don't feel like all vegan is the greatest for me. Um, and I also try to do a little bit more of a keto diet. So less carbs not a complete, like I haven't been able to be completely vegan or completely keto. Okay. Um, but I strive for both of those things. Gotcha. Time, which is very difficult. Um, so it's a constant learning process mm -hmm. for sure. And then, um, with that going, you, did you have to cut out sugars too? Cause with your sweet tooth. Yeah. Like I don't eat any, like chocolate bars or like if I don't know what's in the food I don't eat it like anything with like sugar in it is not really something I tend to eat once in a while I'll have Cinnabon I love Cinnabon <laughs> I love the Cinnabon Cinnabon um the sticks the ones that they make the little mini ones that you can just dip things in oh yeah I've had those but not any time like not recently but I have had a Cinnabon in Vegas when you were sure. doing your cancer treatments what was your substitute for sugar did you uh fruit uh berries i ate berries plus a whole thing of like blackberries or raspberries like every single night mm -hmm. which is something i think was actually pretty healthy it doesn't have tons of sugar the berries are really like good antioxidants too um but blueberries i didn't eat as much of i think they're a little bit higher in sugar as well but i love those too i'm a berry freak like, I, I could never overeat them. <laughs> yeah, I remember when I messaged you, I think one of the, because you, you were, your first, that caption, that, our first interaction, um, you talked about, like, figuring out what to do with, like, your regular lifestyle and everything. I, for me, I said, and I always tell people it was, staying active was a big thing, but also yes. diet. You was, reminded me of that. Yeah. And, and I, was, I stuck by that. Yeah, you have to just you have to keep your mind away from all the all the other stuff and stay busy. And yeah, I remember I told you I had to cut certain things from my Asian culture. It was the doctors were like cut away everything that's like sort of soy based, fermented. Um, yeah, cut away anything that's hormone based. So like I only ate um, female animals, which was really really hard. Because Interesting. Because, like, you know, the males, they put in the testosterone and, like, they can grow and all that stuff. So, like, chickens, I can only, you know, have the, uh, the ones that made sure they had the heads on so I can see if it's a guy or a girl and um, all these kind of things. Couldn't have fish that didn't have scales. Only could have fish with scales because that means they're protected. And, I don't know, it was just a bunch of weird stuff. Whether it worked or not, I don't know. But... But yeah, there's such a science to it. Like, I didn't know any of those things you just told me. That is amazing. Like, yeah. I, I'm going to learn about that next. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess we're going into there. You talked a bit about it. So your current diet. Your current diet is a little keto, a little vegan. Um, yeah. And then do you cook everything yourself? Do you have some meal prep companies or anything like that? No. Um, I've had meal you know, prep companies before like just my husband's a professional athlete so we've yeah. been offered them I've been offered them and to be honest like they're they're only usually good for me for like a week and then mm. I don't know I don't I find the food quality doesn't always stay the same and I get sick of it and like I can cook the same meals regularly and never get sick of them you're that kind of person like you can have the same thing over and over and over again well, yeah, like my husband has his favorites. Like when I make meatballs, um, I make it with buckwheat now instead of rice because it's healthier for both of us. Um, he could eat that like every day. <laughs> cater to Misha's dietary restrictions as much, meaning because, you know, he has his regimen, 
you've got your regimen. Do you cook two separate things or do you stick to one? No, I usually will cook one meal and then I give him more like meat or less of something that I want um, or something that he doesn't like as much, but I'll just make it as one big meal. Um, I feel like it usually takes the same amount of time to make a big meal with different components if you just plan it before you start. So I think that'll work like when you have a family too. If people like different things, you just have many sides. <laughs> yeah. What was it? What when when I went to when I went to go visit you guys uh, and I cooked for you guys? What was something that he didn't like? He didn't like cooked fruit or berries or something. I can't remember, but he still ate. Oh, it. maybe you did cook the peaches. I think. I yeah, I did. I did like a peach cobbler kind of thingy. But that was amazing. You would cook everything really, really good. Well, that's because you had a really nice stocked fridge too. Like you're, you're, we you're, did. Not, we did. Yeah. Had, the key thing is your fridge had fresh ingredients. Always. We always have fresh ingredients. Like I'm all about like having everything fresh and nothing like pre-made or like manufactured. Like we don't even eat a lot of like rice, awesome. things like yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. I, I always wanted to talk to you, talk about it is because in your household, your dynamic of food, it's very interesting because you guys take that health aspect to, I guess, a more higher level than obviously society, right? You've got professional athlete, you've got a professional model, plus you've got, uh, both of you guys are very much into health and wellness because of your, your lifestyle, right? And yeah. do you find that not having, you know, for us, like when, any, when I compete for bodybuilding or stuff, not having snacks or like any of those things as like um, temptations is something. For you guys, when I went to your house, everything was just really, really clean, very, all that kind of stuff. Um, do you guys do that just naturally? Um, just, you know, you're like, this is what we like to eat or do you try to keep it away because you know that if it's there, I'm gonna have some? Um, I would say it's lessons learned. <laughs> uh, there are, Misha accidentally one time ordered a box of like 48 Snickers bars. <laughs> yeah, accidentally. And then I was like, we have to send them back. Like we're going to return these. And then they were like, no, you can keep them and we'll return you the money. So it was like, we were stuck with 48 Snickers bars. And we, you know, we ne we were already at the point where we didn't really have stuff like that in the house. Okay. But then we both ate kind of over ate them. And we still had some left at the end and like never wanted to do that again. And those, that was like one of the lessons learned. Mm. It was like, if you want something like that, if you really want something like that, you got to walk to the gas station to like get it. Got you. Yeah. That's a good mentality. For me, it's like, yeah. I, it's okay if it's here, I won't touch it. But once I've touched it or once I've had a little bite, it's <laughs> Kind of gets a little downhill, so. Uh, it's addictive. It's a it drug. Is. It is. How yeah. do you, what's harder for you? Dieting in regards to sort of being in this, you know, dealing with cancer and all that kind of stuff? Or was it harder to stick to a diet when you were modeling? Don't get, I'm, you're still modeling, but like when you're like, when you were really, really yeah. going to go into it. Yeah, yeah. Like I'm, I'm actually sort of phasing out of how I used to model. I would say I'm like, coming into retirement <laughs> it's kind of transition you're a veteran you're a veteran yeah yeah exactly and I'm totally cool with that um it was an awesome part of my life and it kind of turned into a platform for me during sharing my story and now I'm going to be transitioning into something else that I'm going to love so it's been awesome but I would say dieting was was less healthy when I was a model because I've always been able to eat what I wanted if I worked out, right? Okay. But yeah, but I also did swim week every year in Miami for like, I think seven or eight years. And you get there and then you realize like how much more dieting everyone else has done. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you kind of like kick it up a notch for like the week before you do these shows so that you look amazing because it just looks better when you're like leaned out and you haven't eaten anything bad. So in that week, you just don't feel good and you're pushing yourself so hard. So it's like when you, when I, if I were to start a new diet now, I would let myself rest more and have the time to hydrate and all of those things where I would just be so busy before. Now I really take care of myself better. I would never do any crazy diet that could throw me into not feeling well or put my immune system down. 
I'm just all about being healthy and incorporating things as I learn. Um, so you brought it up because when you were talking about your shows and stuff, it, for me, it made me think of when I compete yeah. my shows. So for us, when we compete for fitness, we'll always, you know, go to our show, everything. Once the show's done, we go on this little binge. We go on this little free for all. Is that something also that models have to take care of? Like, do you guys usually, you know, if, if you have like, say your swim week show or something like that, you do your big diet, show's all done. Then do you guys do girls or do you guys just go out and just have like your little binge thing or most of the time it's yeah. really kept well? No, I would say most of us would go out and eat like whatever we wanted once the shows were done and or even once the shows started because it, it tended like to not show up right away, you know? So it's like, okay, we got the casting and we booked the jobs the day of the show or right before the show, you wouldn't eat like a big burger, but you'd already be like cheating. And I remember us eating, eating like candy and, you know, having shots and stuff like that. So it wasn't the healthiest, yeah. but um, I think models are pretty good at maintaining a decent diet most of the time. So it's nothing like I've heard of like bodybuilders and they're like just completely different looking <laughs> before and after. We are, we are totally completely different. Yeah. Um, yeah, like I don't know how you guys do it. <laughs> When you were when you were modeling, um, did you did you have to hire a coach like a diet coach, or was everything always yourself? So, what, did you take yeah. care of yourself, or did Misha take care of your diets for you? Or, um, I never had a coach, but I did have a personal trainer at one point, like in the beginning of me when when I first started doing swim week, I got a personal trainer that completely changed my body Amazing. and really taught me how to work out at the gym properly and just like what things I could target and why, and like based on my injuries and stuff like that, how to like strengthen my knees and, and things like that. Cause in Miami, it's just different when you're running on the beach than when you're running like on the treadmill too. So it was just little things that I learned and I always learned something new. And then I actually became a personal trainer. So I took the course and everything um, in Toronto with CanFit Pro and um, I never used it here. I like <laughs> you know. Miami, but. Like, I'm a person there, you know, can't fit pro. <laughs> yeah, but I, like, I really just wanted to learn how to do it myself. Yeah. So, <laughs> that's crazy that you, you were able to, you know, be at the upper echelon, I guess, if you want to call it, in regards to beauty, fitness, and all that stuff, and still do it yourself. So, you're very intuitive with your body. Yeah, I love learning about this stuff. It's it was great for my job. It's great for like your life. It's great for your family. Like my mom, I'm always encouraging her to be healthier and she's always encouraged me to be healthy too. And my husband, um, being an athlete starting off like so young, your diet is so different than, than it is now. Like he can't eat a tub of ice cream all the time and it feel like it's healthy, you know, where yeah. when he's like 20, it didn't matter. So Okay, <laughs> let's talk, let's get, I'm going to give you, we're going to go into something called uh, In the Weeds. So it's a rapid fire okay. question for us, In the Weeds, oh, it's where we're in like the shits in the restaurant, you know, all this, it's the busy Friday nights, the busy Saturday lunches and dinners. So I'm going to throw you a bunch of questions. You're going to just going to take them and answer them as fast as you can. Ooh. Okay, let's all try right. it. Worst vegan product you've ever tried? Uh, tofu. Favorite dish of all time? Fish? Favorite dish? Uh, sorry, I'm not fast. Um, this is tough. I would say spaghetti and meatballs. Okay. The last <laughs> meal you'd eat before you die? Uh, turkey dinner. Really? Yeah, with all the fixings. Like turkey, mash, peas, cranberry yeah. sauce, stuffing. Asparagus. Pumpkin what? Pumpkin pie? Yeah, sure. Pumpkin pie. <laughs> it's not my favorite pie, but. No, I'll neither mine. Not mine either. Yeah, I would do apple instead. I was going to say, I like apple or blueberry. Blueberries are good. Blueberries. Yeah. And strawberry rhubarb. So yeah. good. Okay. So good. Um, best thing you've ever made? Um. Vegan mac and cheese. 
Okay. Um, with quinoa pasta. With quinoa pasta? Yeah. That sounds really good. Sounds really good. You should have told me to make that. I would have loved making some eating some mac and cheese at the moment. I know, but I'm not on my plate. It's different with your without your own blender. Yeah. Um, all right. Last, uh, the last thing you made, Misha, to eat. Uh, probably meatballs with buckwheat and like tomato, cucumber, avocado salad with like fresh Parmesan on it. The yeah. last dirty food you had. <laughs> Dairy Queen <laughs> with my mom. Was it just the ice cream or? A blizzard. We get the mini blizzard. That's not too bad. But it's okay. No, but I, I felt really guilty. It's like something super processed that I hadn't had in a long time. Had the but Dairy Queen ice cream cakes? What's that? You had the Dairy Queen ice cream cakes? Yeah, I have. Gold medal ribbon is my favorite. No, I gotta go OG. The original is. Oh, like no, I'm thinking of Baskin Robbins. Oh, no, no, no. Dairy Queen ice cream cakes, honestly, they hit different. They I'll have to try these. The layers, the crunch, the textures, so good. Next time we're Maybe gonna, we'll have to go. I was just going to say, we'll go eat one together. We'll just yeah. eat one giant one and eat one together. All right. <laughs> All right. We're going from food. we got to go. We already talked a little bit about it, but we're going to go into health and fitness and lifestyle and sort of aesthetics. And we have to talk about it because we're talking with you. So. One of the things I talked to you about, and I mentioned earlier, was staying active was something that really kept me, I think, um, positive and helped me with my battle with cancer. And you said you took that to heart as well, and you really stuck to fitness during the time you were battling your cancer. What was, um, what was your fitness lifestyle like when you were taking care of it? Um, like during treatment? Yeah. Um, it was def definitely different. I like I kept things going regularly at first, and then as um, I progressed throughout treatment, I'd say halfway through like chemotherapy, I was getting I was having like really weak days. Um, it was like some medicine that you take could really make your whole body hurt. So I remember not even being able, not even being able to do a proper push up, like falling my face. Like I got really frustrated. So then I just lied on the ground and I stretched. And just like lying flat on the ground felt good. Like you could feel everything in your body. So I just started listening to my body. It was like what had to be stretched or moved that felt good. And how many stairs could I climb? Mm. Like some days it was like that. And then some days I would feel back to normal again. And then I hurt myself really bad. Um, I was jumping off something really high, trying to get a cool picture for a, for a shoe thing. And um my knee just went out and it was the most devastating part was getting injured like that and I had um a cane so then I did physio and I had to work up my strength in my knee again and it's still not 100% so I had to remember back to when I had an injury before and just be patient with myself and do different cardio and different things and use ankle weights and it was, uh, it was different. Yeah. I guess we have to preface this for everybody that is going, let's go right back real quick into your cancer battle, which is you, how you did chemotherapy. Did you do radiation? I can't remember. Yeah. You, yeah. So and I did surgery first. Uh -huh. Um, and then after a second surgery, they determined that I needed chemotherapy. Like it had spread a little bit. It just spread to one lymph node, but then they treat you like you're stage four because they assume it could be like running rapid in your body. So I did chemotherapy after like really aggressive treatment. And then I had a six month or a six week break. And then I did six weeks of radiation. And like two weeks after radiation, my skin went back to normal and everything in the spot. And my hair started growing back. And it's been like this long. <laughs> From the time you were diagnosed to the yeah. time you were finished all your treatments and in the clear, how long was that? Um, I think it was about, so I got diagnosed October, 2018. And then I didn't start chemotherapy till January. We just didn't expect it to be that bad. And then I finished, it was like a year ago, I finished. So from October 2018 to like August 2019, yeah, it's like nonstop treatment. Yeah. 
So it's almost, it's like 10, you have like a 10 month time. Or yeah, like nine, 10 months. Months, right? Yeah. January, eight months, eight around, but the whole thing. Yeah. And so prior to that, what was your fitness like? Um, it was intense and it was great. Like I really had mastered it. <laughs> okay, so like what's a, what's the typical day of, of a model of, you know, an MMA fighter wife pre-cancer? Uh, okay, and it's kind of back to like how it was then, now, right before I left Vegas, but we wake up, okay. one of us makes coffee, depending on who's more tired, and then um, we go to LVAC, is like our favorite gym, um, and do like a one to two hour workout, and then uh, go home, make like our biggest meal of the day. Okay. And then um, sometimes we go for a bike ride. I just got a bike. So that's something we did here when we lived here and something we started doing there. But now Misha's like obsessed with mountain biking. He gets up at 5 a.m. to go. Well, like, that's what you're in Vegas though. Come on. What? It's because you're also in Vegas. You guys got like crazy hills and amazing places. Yeah. But it's like his new love. Like nothing got him out of bed at 5 a.m. You know, but every day he does it so that's really cool I'm a little bit nervous to do the crazy mountain biking like him yet because I don't want to hurt myself <laughs> I used to be like an adrenaline junkie and I would like do anything that could hurt me and now I'm a little bit more aware of that but I think I'll get back there eventually um so then yeah we go home like make our biggest meal chill relax um sometimes we have nap like we we like to nap because we really push ourselves hard and um usually he will do like his MMA classes or because he teaches jujitsu um not really in vegas but he participates more so there and he works on his like sparring or his mma so he'll do that like at night if he doesn't do it in the morning and then i usually only go to the gym once and sometimes i'll go twice in the day do you so, like her Oh, does Misha ever want to train you or do you ever ask him to train you? Do you guys do your own separate things or? We usually do it, our separate things at the gym, but once in a while we will want to show each other something okay. like a new machine or like, Hey, can you do this? Like, look what I can do. Um, and just sometimes we feel like doing all the same stuff together, but usually it's him training me. I don't usually train him. He's a teacher. Like he's so good at it. I'm not the best personal trainer or teacher, I guess. He is so good at it. So it's usually him training me. <laughs> would, you, would you ever, have you ever sparred him? Like, or has you like, you ever asked him to teach me how to spar, teach me how to fight? Yeah. Yeah? We have. It's something that I should do more regularly and he bugs me about it. Um, cause he's really good at teaching it, but, um, I don't always love listening to him, <laughs> but once in a while, like he will, and sometimes we'll do it for like a week or two and I'll like build up some good technique and I get better and then I'll have to travel or I start doing something else that I need to do for my body. But, um, I'm by no means like an expert at it. I wish I was better at jujitsu, to be honest. I find it so difficult and it's such a valuable like knowledge to have, especially for women. So it's something that I will definitely be trying over and over again. <laughs> my head right now, I'm just picturing you grappling with Misha. And I'm yeah, just we used to have mats. Oh yeah, I was like, but I was like, there's no way Brit you can throw. You can't throw Misha. Misha's way too big for you to like. Yeah, that's how you hurt yourself. <laughs> gotcha. But that's more judo. That's more judo. With jujitsu, it's more like putting yourself in a better position. And often if you're small and then the guy's big, you can take them down if you know more. If you're the same level, it's not possible, but I could never be, like, he's a black belt. <laughs> he's a professional MMA okay. fighter. <laughs> exactly. I'm nowhere near. Okay. And people always ask me, like, if I'm an MMA fighter too. And I'm like, really? That's like, a good compliment. Yeah, I'm like, cool, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so we've talked food, we've talked fitness. Um, let's talk something else that you're very much into that has to do with looks. Um, that I don't think a lot of people know, and I mentioned it is 
you're a sneakerhead. Yeah, I love sneakers. You're a sneakerhead. You're actually, you, you rock with a brand called Zen. Yeah, I love Zen. Zen, they're in LA? Or no, Vegas? they're actually in Las Vegas. They're in Vegas. Um, yeah. Let's talk about it. Where, how'd you get into the sneaker game? Um, where did it all begin? Okay, well, I've always loved sneakers. Like, my whole entire life, I've been a tomboy. Like, I had an older brother, so sneakers were always my jam. Even when I was a kid, like, my mom would try to get me to wear proper shoes with a dress, but it was always sneakers. So I've always been into that. Um, and then when my story, like, I talked about my story, and I met um, the founder and owner of Zen, which his name is Kareem, um, in... 2018 right after I got diagnosed and he heard about my story and then he was following my story online on Instagram and he was in Toronto and we met with each other after I did a photo shoot during treatment mm -hmm. and I was just telling him my story what I was doing he was following my workouts was something that he thought was really cool is that I was like working out off the chemo like trying to sweat it out yeah. um, so he offered me a contract with Zen to help with my bills. And basically he gave me a job um, to be like an Instagram influencer for Zen who he hadn't even gone public with it yet. Um, so it's, it's very new, but they're doing so well. They just opened a store in LA. That might be why you thought they were there, but it's pretty cool. They have the whole social distancing thing down to a T and it's still cool and awesome. And they have like so many cool people that rep their stuff, so. When I went to go visit you guys, you told me to go check them out. And I love their, the place was cool. Um, yeah. You've been with them for just over a year then? Um, yeah, longer than a year. So, or yeah, maybe like a year and a half. Okay. Yeah. And then are you, are you, are you in the flip game? The, the flip game. The flip game for sneakers. Are you, are you flipping your sneakers? Or? Oh, no. No, no. I know about, like, the StockX stuff. Uh-huh. And I've gotten a pair of sneakers on there before. But uh -huh. I actually learned about that from being with Zen. Like, they, they're on a whole other sneakerhead level. Yeah, 100%. Like, I don't even, it is like another world. Like, I, I shouldn't even call myself a sneakerhead compared to some of these people. But, um, like, some amazing stories of people that have gone from nothing to something with the sneaker flipping game, which is In, pretty cool. Yeah. So, yeah. With, 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 when it comes to sneakers, then, um, how many pairs do you have right now? Do you have more sneakers than heels? Oh, yeah. Yeah? Do you have yeah. at least 20 pairs of sneakers? Yes. Yes? Are yes. you a sneakerhead that's more into colors or are you more into design? Um, yeah, I'm very particular. I remember, when I, 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 I remember when I visited you, you wore like your yellow, I can't remember, your were yellow. Yeah, the Nike Garage. Oh, I was like, those things were the first thing I saw. Those are so cool. Those are probably like my favorite sneakers. Yeah. They're like all white and then they have yellow on them and they also have like um, kind of, I don't know what it is when you like glow in the dark outside, but they have a strip of that too. Yeah, they're pretty cool. They look like comic, like a comic book. Yeah, they're very, very cartoonish kind of vibe. So yeah. So you were saying you're very particular. What, what do you look for when you're like wanting to buy a pair of shoes? Um, usually like I don't know what I'm going to buy at all, but I'll see something and I'm like that would look really good with like an outfit style that I have. So I'll like think of the day or where I'm going or like the look I want to have because I'll have many looks. Like sometimes I want to be really sporty and I don't want to look girly at all. Like I went through that phase when I had the shaved head at first. I didn't really know how to like dress up like I normally wouldn't like a dress or something for a Friday night. I would go more like a tomboy look with like a t-shirt, like boxy t-shirt or something. And, but I can always like dress up even a dress with sneakers. I'm really good at that. Is, okay, so when you go from outfits, do you go outfit to the feet or do you wear, bring the outfit to the shoes? Which, one's the, which, one, <laughs> which one takes precedent? 
That's a good question because it's often that I pick the shoe and then I have the outfit to go. But I would say more times I pick the outfit and then the shoe. Mm, okay. And sometimes it's shoe and purse. Makes total sense. Yeah, it's like they go together. Okay, what am I gonna wear with this? <laughs> you bring something up because about dresses, about uh, when um, easier to wear stuff. Let's talk about modeling as Brit 2.0. So what I mean by Brit 2.0 is Brit, the model during cancer. We talked about this and I thought everybody should hear about this. You told me that you were more busy and getting hit up way more for brands and events and, and gigs while you were having cancer than previously. Yeah, I mean, it got really, really busy and I think it was just more overwhelming to be honest. Um, it was just exhausting and when I look back I probably would never like tell someone to do that while they're going through treatment it's not good for you but I think it was sort of a therapy for me keeping my mind off what was really going on by just saying yes to everything um but yeah I was very busy because I had a new look and people knew me and they were so interested and in Toronto I'd say it's like a little less diverse than some other places I've been with in the sense of what they're allowed to do style wise and look wise on people. So I was like the only girl with a shaved head at the time and everyone wanted the girl with the shaved head. And also with a story, I find now you can't just be like a pretty face or someone that looks good in the clothes. People want a story. So it's, you're not just a model anymore. And now people were just really interested in my story and wanted to help me survive this and wanted to help me pay my bills by hiring me and just empowering me. It was like so special. I, I got hit up by a lot of cool brands too. Like people that had like a mother that had been through cancer and everyone's been touched by cancer. So, you know, they would all really take good care of me too. So it was nice. It was really nice cool to watch when you're going through the treatments and stuff, the amount of different collabs that you were working on and gigs that you were going on. You were doing like the runway stuff, you were doing, you know, Nobis, Fashion Weeks, all that. But then you're also doing things with like painting and like a different gym and all these kind of things. Okay. And was that something that you actively went out to go search for? Or was, like I said, these were people that sort of just followed and like wanted to come reach out? Yeah, I definitely had to pick and choose the stuff I thought was the coolest. So I really wanted to tell my story in a way that could help other people. So if it had something to do with health and wellness, I was all about that. Okay. And if somebody had a really cool idea with um, regards to the way I liked to look during that time, I went with that too. Like, I love Nobis. They're awesome. And I liked the way they styled me. It was very, like... It was nothing wild and crazy. Yeah. It was like a look that you could have and no one would know you were sick. Right. Um, and then I did like magazine cover. It was super creative. Like I was in a greenhouse and they had flowers all over me and it was for a hair magazine, but I was completely smooth, like no hair at all, but they made it look so stylish. So it was just, it had to be creative or it had to do with health and wellness or it had to be something that I thought would be really cool. Um, yeah, I usually pick and choose now. Before treatment, it was all about like how much money I could make. Now it's like, you gotta pay me good and I gotta really enjoy it. Or it has to be something that can help people. Like during COVID, I only wanted to do stuff that was gonna make a difference. Yeah. I yeah. think that's, that's something that I talk, when I talk to people who are, have gone through something, doesn't matter if it's cancer or something like that. It's a big change. You go, you go from, you really open your eyes to what's more important now. Yeah. And I think COVID did the same thing. It opened up the eyes to everybody in regards to, oh, I don't need this excessive thing on a Friday night or whatever. I only need the essentials. Yeah. The only thing, that's the only thing that I really care at the moment. Um, yeah, so that's cool to see that for a lot of, especially as a model, for someone going through cancer and have to take your, you know, hair's going away, you might not look, the first thing you, that everybody worries about, or obviously you probably worried about was, well, am I, are people going to still want me? Will people still want to give me gigs? Um, am I, how's my career yeah. going to go? And I think it's something that 
a lot of women feel in general, not even if you're just a model, but like in life, it's like your partner is your partner still going to be like in love with you and attracted to you. And are you going to seem like you're a burden on people? I mean, I remember you even feeling like that as like such a young kid, you know, to your family, like, are you going to be costing them like some crazy expenses and stuff? And it's, it's like a real, it's a real thing. And I think it's part of why I pushed myself to work so hard too during that time. And unfortunately that kind of goes with the territory, but um, you're lucky if you have enough people around you to like support you and make you not feel that way, which I also did, <laughs> but yeah. Okay, let's go into now, we're gonna get into reps and sets. So reps and sets are, is our rapid fire question segment for, for this side. Uh, so if you're ready, we're okay. gonna go right into it, cool? Okay, I'm gonna try to do it really fast, let me get some water. All right. Okay. All right, first one is gonna be sort of fitness based. Yoga, yes. or, yoga or weightlifting? Yoga. Yoga? Yeah. Sports or MMA? Sport. Uh, <laughs> for me, sports, but I don't watch sports. I only watch MMA. Okay. Um, yeah. Let's talk sneakers now. High tops or low tops? Low tops. Checks or stripes? Checks. Vans or Pumas? Pumas. All right, we're gonna go into now heels. Okay. Ubu Ten or Stuart Wiesman? Stuart Wiesman. Jimmy Choo or Gucci? Jimmy Choo. All right, we'll go bags. Chanel or LV? LV. Prada or Dior? Dior. Okay, okay. That was real quick. You got those real fast. All right, well, let's talk now. I just got to know myself. That's so weird. <laughs> cool, though. No? Um, Let's talk life. Let's talk life. And I think the biggest part I've always found with cancer, I, we chat about it all the time. It's that it changed life. It changed your life dramatically. Like yeah. it's, there's no way you're going back to a regular life after you've gone through something like that. And we can't talk about you without talking about how you started modeling. So how did your career start of becoming a model? Oh, wow. We're going way back. Okay, so <laughs> I was, um, when I hit about like 11 or 12 years old, I got really like tall and thin. I was the tall, I was probably the tallest kid in my class, um, which I didn't love because it like makes you stick out. And I was such a tomboy, like I did not dress girly at all. Like I remember like plaid pants were cool, which kids nowadays would never do that. But, um, and like baggy pants, but I got approached a few times on the street by like model scouts and things like that. And I was never really interested in it. Um, and my uncle, he, he's gay, he's past now, but him and all of like his friends, they, some of them were, one of them was a photographer. So they were kind of in that world. And they told my mom, I'd be really great for it too. So just kind of kept getting brought up. And then I told my mom, like, like, why not try it? Because I would love to have a job. So she brought me into, we found out what the best modeling agency was because we always thought everyone was a scam. Mm. Um, it was kind of just weird to be approached. And then we went into Ford Modeling Agency. They were the best ones at the time. And actually my agent now was running the agency then there, which is crazy. Um, and they were just like, we would love to sign you, but you have to grow your eyebrows in more. Cause I, it was like that time, that era. Uh -huh. People fucked them all. <laughs> so I did that and everything. And then when I got my first paycheck, I was hooked. Uh -huh. I was, okay, this was like a lot of money for somebody that's like 13, I think by then when I got my first job. Do you remember what your first gig was? It was, I believe it was like wedding gowns, which is bizarre for like a That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Okay. And then, um, but I remember my first casting was super awkward because the guy was really old and I had to dance with him and it was for a TV commercial and I just bombed it because I didn't want to go anywhere near him. <laughs> but I got more and more comfortable with the industry and things like that as it went. I, and I, for the most part, I'm very lucky. I had a great experience as a model. So it was, it was good. And then I got to travel when I was really young and I've been all over the world and I've had great, great experiences, but I didn't, 
I never finished university the first time around because it was just so difficult to do both. And mm -hmm. it's something that I wish now that I did because I'm going back to school and it, were, it really would have helped. <laughs> what did you go to school for at that time? Um, I went to U of T for um, environmental science. Initially it was psychology, but I really didn't have a passion for anything. I just knew you should go to school after high school. Um, so I did that. It was really important to my father. And then when my father passed, I stopped going to university and I just went to work and I traveled and I did modeling. Was, so. was I guess, being a, can I use the term teenage model? Is, is that? Yeah. <laughs> being a teenager is already hard enough, right? Like, it's, yeah. it's already there's ups and downs. How hard was it to be a teenage model going through high school and everything like that? Did like, did your friends know? Did your teachers know or? Oh, interesting. I actually kept a secret for a long time. So um, in high school, my first few years of high school, I went to a regular high school. Um, and then for work, I started going to an alternative school so that I could work as a model full time and also finish high school. And luckily I was pretty mature to do it. So a lot of people thought it was cool that I was doing it that I told and they did the same thing and never finished high school. Mostly the guys, the boys were not as mature and they weren't as good as doing school because you had to do everything on your own. It was one hour a week per class and you had to make sure you finished all your work. So I was able to do that and sort of keep it a secret from people that didn't know me, but like my close friends always knew. When, when was there, do you remember or recall the time when it was someone that was not a close friend was like, hey, I saw you on this or, hey, that's yes. Yeah, what was, do you, what was it? In high school, I was in like a magazine. It was like Cosmo or something like, one of the magazines that people all get. And a boy that I knew actually saw me and he pulled out the picture of me and he put it like on some lockers. And I was like mortified. That is such a high school like. It was such a high school like shitty thing almost to do. Like when I look back at it now, I'm like, who cares? But yeah. during that time, I was so. At that time, you would be mortified, hundred percent. So yeah. Then that, and then, at what point did you? I guess after alternative school, then you're just like took it full on. Like, yeah, that's me. This is what I do. This is my job. Um, yeah. Yeah. It took some time though to really be like, yes, I'm a model. Like, Cause I really felt like it was kind of braggy and it was something I was doing as a real job. So I didn't want people to think any differently of me because of it. And I never thought of myself as like someone that was like super beautiful or anything like that. I thought of myself as like an athlete all the time. Like I was always just like a sporty person. Um, so I just, I never wanted to be that person either. I never wanted to be like the swimsuit model, you know. Do you find it, what, what do you find it maybe harder to put out as a title? Model or influencer? Now you got two sort of generations. Yeah, yeah, because influencers, it just sounds so in intense, you know, like I'm here to influence you. But I, I prefer influencer. I feel like you have more to offer than just like, oh, I'm a model, you know, like people can think a lot of negative things when you just say I'm a model, unless they love models, but not everyone does. And it, it can make a lot of women insecure too when you tell them you're a model. But if you say you're an influencer, they want to know like, oh, what do you do? Like, what do you know? What, do you, what is it that you talk about? Like, what information can I like learn from you? And I like that. Amazing. Uh, okay. Okay, let's get right into something else, which is, um, a really cool story, and I, I want to see if you'd like to share it, was you talked to me about something called Pretty Sick and how it all started from a 12-year-old boy. Um, yeah. Would you like to share that with everybody? Yeah, actually, it has a lot to do with Zen, too. So I started my own brand called Pretty Sick. Um, I just thought it was fitting because of my journey going through cancer. I was always told that I looked so pretty, even with a shaved head, and because I was still modeling, um, I thought that was pretty sick. So uh, that ended up being the name. And then the logo is a logo that my mom made a long time ago, but we just reconfigured it to have a bald head. 
Um, so it's really a nice, beautiful logo. And um, so when I first started with Zen, they sent me a ton of new sneakers and new fitness wear. And that's what I lived in. Dur during treatment and everything, that's what I was most comfortable in. And I could also just do a workout or stretch comfortably anytime, anywhere. If I was already looking good in that, I could go out, but I'd still be comfortable enough to remember to like get these things in. So when I was going through my treatment, I was hearing about this little boy, Lucas, who was 12 years old, who was also going through treatment. So my mom's superintendent was his uncle and he was giving us regular updates and we were doing treatment like kind of on the same path at the same time. And I just couldn't get over it. It was so sad for me to hear about it. and it just didn't sound like it was going great and like it was on his brain and I just thought oh, I can't imagine if that was me like if it was on my brain like if I would be okay if I could I mean and if I was 12 years old without having like my full personality formed and everything how I would deal with that so I wanted to just help him somehow because people were sending me nice things and making me feel good and like his family was struggling, um, they're, they're amazing, but I didn't know at the time if, you know, how much of them they were getting, that he was getting and everything. So he also had a twin sister that was, you know, thriving and he's a boy, she's a girl, he's, she's like outgrowing him. And I was just thinking of all of these things and I thought, what could I make for him that would give him like some inspiration? So I got pretty good at writing and I wrote him a really nice letter and I put together a fight it kit is what I, I call it a fight it kit because they make fight kits for UFC fighters before their fights and the fans always want to reach out to me and ask me for stuff from it like they like the flip-flops or they want the official UFC bag and there are certain things that you just can't buy online that the fighters get so I asked Misha he had a fight coming up during my treatment if I could have his fight it kit when he came back to visit me so after the fight he brought me one and then I just made it even better and I put like some really cool like sports stuff in there because he likes a lot of the Toronto teams and like stickers and a remote control Ferrari and just I remember I reached out to you and I asked you like what would a 12 year old boy like and so I was just thinking about this for quite some time probably a couple of months it took me because my energy was so low too um of what to fill it with and then he I sent it to him I gave it to his uncle to give it to him it ended up being on Easter and he actually sent me some little Easter eggs he made back it was just really sweet but his parents told me that like he got out of bed that day for the first time in a long time he hadn't wanted to play so I thought wow that's awesome that's all it takes like that's actually pretty easy, you know, to pick somebody up and you're just a total stranger, but you get to have this connection. So it's something I continue to do all this year with Zen. So every, it's about every month I make one for someone that I find kind of inspiring or whose story just made me feel a certain way. And I send it to them and I follow their story and it just keeps me inspired along the way. It makes me not forget, you know, like all that stuff that I had to go through that was so tough and it reminds you that there's always somebody else that's going through something harder than you. That's amazing. And yeah. is, uh, where can people find that? Where can people find Pretty Sick or get more information or reach out to you? Well, it is in the works, but me and my mother made, um, so Pretty Sick is my brand and Zen helps me contribute to the Fight It Kit. So the Fight It Kits, we're going to be making a website about with people's stories and stuff like that soon. I'm working with a marketing company called Idiba that heard me do a talk in New York um, when I was finished treatment. And they wanted, they heard about the Fight It Kit and they were like, how can we make, help you make more? So they helped me with the other costs that Zen can't, pro so Zen provides all the goods, all the shoes and sportswear and the backpacks and everything. And Idiba will help me if I need like a, an extra bag or if the shipping costs, um, cause often I have to mail them out um, and anything else that it costs. So they help with that. And then Pretty Sick is our brand. So my mom started making what we call Who Eggs and it's something you can wear around your neck, which I wore around my neck during radiation. Um, so that the sun wouldn't touch there because it was summertime and I didn't want to wear a turtleneck um, and you can also wear it as a mask now so during COVID it's been nice and we've been sending them in each fight kit but we're going to be selling them soon. Oh, 
songs, you just have to learn how to make more of them. <laughs> it's so crazy how sometimes some of the things in our life that we least expect to be positive things connects us with so many different unique opportunities and people and individuals. And yeah. I'm excited to see just how far you go with this because it's like, like you said, it doesn't take much for something to just pick someone up. Yeah. Okay. And it's like if something means so much to you, you're willing to take it farther. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I guess we can get into now that a little more than your entrepreneurial side, right? So you, you model yourself, you have pretty sick, you, you find your own collabs and you do all these brand partnerships and stuff. You're about to start a new career path. Yeah. Yeah. Would you like to, if you want I'm so excited about it. If you want to, you could tell, tell everybody about it. I'm, I'm going to go yeah. as fast or as much as I, as you want to go. So, um, okay. all yours. let's tell, tell us what's, what's Brit up to. Okay, so I got into school, something I said I would never do again. It was so much anxiety for me the first time, but I am so excited and I'm so passionate about this. I want to become a nurse really, really badly. And um, I just got accepted into Nevada State College. So I'm back in school on Monday and always starting classes. <laughs> so I just, um, I did everything to get in and I just got my tuition in and everything on time, my books ordered. And I just cannot wait because I'm ready for a new career and I can seriously help people this way. And I feel like there is definitely a need for nurses. So everything in me feels really, really good about this decision. And I feel like I can't lose motivation because of it. Amazing. So yeah. is it a full-time program? Are you going to go full-time? Yep. I'm going to keep full-time um, so that I can go back to Vegas and do school and still like keep my health care here. So if you're a full-time student and you're abroad, you can keep your health care in Toronto, your OHIP, which is nice. And um, then I can become a nurse faster. So probably in like three or four years, I'll be able to do what I want. Amazing. And then... Yeah. Will you just this? I guess this is very interesting because it goes back to when you're a teenager going to school and modeling. Now you are the model going back to school. Um, yeah. Are you going to be doing any more of the modeling stuff or? Um, we'll see because I don't mind doing the speaking stuff. So when people want to hear my story or like how I've um, chosen to give back or if my story helps people, I, I don't mind sharing it. However, um, I do need to not be consumed with the cancer world at a certain point. So I'm going to step back a little bit from that after the end of the year. This year is completely dedicated to anyone that needs me or needs my story. I feel like it's really important for me. And then I'm going to submerge myself all into school. And being with my family is so important because I'm always away from them. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that that alone can cause enough stress to give you an illness and so I do not want to be away from my husband and my mom like all the time and traveling too much it's just got to mean more to me than a job so at what point when was it that you're like I want to go back to school um okay so nursing is something I have thought about doing over the years and then work always came first it always came in the way because there were so many things I wanted to achieve um, and you needed money to do that and living in Toronto is so expensive. And now that we're in Vegas, um, it's a lot more of an affordable lifestyle. Um, I think I have a really good four year plan. And as long as I can keep doing like content online and stuff, making enough money that way, it'll be, it'll be doable. So I'm just going, I'm just going to keep moving forward with that and just to grab things as I go that I need. So work-wise, we will just see if the opportunity fits. That's, that's, I, I, it's cool now because like you're going into this transition, you're transitioning from so many different things, right? And now yeah. you're still transitioning from a model to quote unquote an influencer. And I think it's cool because I feel like you're, you said you're retiring per se from modeling, but it just feels like you're, you can, your career as a, influencer if you will is just starting meaning yeah you've got a whole new story of 
ex model, nurse, cancer. And survivor. like being a nurse is the best way to influence, I think. Agreed. Especially now yeah. during COVID, right? Like yes. incredible. I wanna like I wanna keep up the influencer part. Um I just don't want it to overwhelm me because it does get overwhelming, you know, when people expect things from you or expect your posting and your blogging and stuff. But I think that going back to school will also help me with my schedule and my writing and all that stuff too. So I'm going to try to share as much of it as I go and there'll be so much more stuff to share. We're going to see you in a Scrubs paid ad soon. And I've done that before. <laughs> I'm actually, I'm going to go over to my mother-in-law's this week and try to find those scrubs because that they were really good ones and they fit extra good. And like, I want to bring them home and just like get into it. If you're going into school, <laughs> it does, are you a little worried or worried at all about like, you know, with COVID and everything like that, or it's pretty okay. I definitely take it into consideration. However, here I feel really safe because in Collingwood, where I stay with my mom, usually there is no, like there's no cases. Um, and I'm really safe. Like, so before COVID, I felt like it was COVID for me. I was having to travel still and make sure I didn't get sick. So I wore a mask and I wore gloves and I always used hand sanitizer and it kept my distance from people already. So it's just something I'm maintaining. And so it hasn't been very difficult, but now that you know about COVID and how, how hard it can be if, if you get it and you have all these issues, um, I, definitely, I definitely try not to travel if I don't have to and I stress out more about it, which isn't good, but um, I've even thought about driving back again, so. Really? <laughs> you know. Yeah, we drove to Vegas when we moved from here because we wanted to bring our car and we just brought as much of our stuff as we could. So I'm like, I've done it before, I could do it again. That's cool. All right, let's go right into YOLO. We're gonna go YOLO, rapid fire, next part. Get your little drink, let's get into it. Let's go. Most unexpected thing you learned from cancer? Um, how to be patient. Uh, yeah. Most grateful thing about cancer? Uh, that it's you only have one life to live. YOLO. YOLO. The thing you hated most about cancer? Uh, seeing so much devastation and feeling really weak. The thing you love the most about cancer? Uh, knowing what my body is fully capable of when it's been through the worst. Last one is advice for anyone going through cancer. Um, talk about it and stay active and stay hopeful. That's it. That's it. We're going to go yeah. into the social hour. I'm going to dive. We're going to dive into your social, um, your social media, a couple photos, and we're just going to get some of that behind the scenes or some of the, some of the little talk behind it. That's more than just a picture. Cool. Okay. All right. I'm going to share my screen with you. I'm so interested. All right. That's the one. That is the one. So that's the one that you were talking about earlier. Um, I had to bring this up and it was cool that you brought it up, but for those who haven't seen, this is a hair magazine. You yeah. are on the cover of a hair magazine with no hair. I know, right? That's it is crazy. such a juxtaposition. And I think it goes to show how, um, how strong a story can be but also how empowering this, this photo is, right? Yeah. Were you- Well, there's a lot of women that actually have alopecia that have contacted me, not realizing that I had had cancer or that approached me on the street too. So I feel like it was awesome that they did this. It was like a green issue. So it's did, like- When they gave you this directive um, or like the direction for the art, were you, were you surprised by it? Did you have an influence on it or? I mean, I thought it was funny because it was a hair magazine and I didn't have any hair. And I thought, of course, of course I got the cover of a hair magazine with no hair. Like me and my mom laughed about it a lot, but I thought it was really cool. And I thought it was something different. And I feel like in Toronto, a lot of times they don't step outside the box within Canada for some reason. It's just like the demographic it has to appeal to. So I thought it was cool that they did something different. That's amazing. That is yeah. really, really cool. Canadian beauty and spa. That's insane. Good for you guys. 
All right, next one. Mm -hmm. This one. So yeah. let's talk about this one. Do you remember this day or? Oh yeah. That was the first time I visited the Zen campus. Okay. Um, that's in Las Vegas. And I got to go into their like sneaker room or their sneaker locker, I think they call it. And um, check out like some of the most epic shoes. And they had the Back to the Future shoe here. Uh -huh. And it's like super expensive. I think it's like, it's worth like 45,000 American dollars. Did you for wear these shoes. Yeah, I put them on. And, and I like played around with them. They were cool, but those were too big for me. They didn't have my size. And like, I like this, I like this photo because it's so, um, it's exactly how you talked about you yourself in regards to, I was a little more tomboy, a little more active, a little more street. Um, this is, this example that it's, it's badass. I, I dig it. I like it. Yeah. I actually loved the look. Me too. I, I, I loved it. It's, it's almost as if this could be in like a regular magazine, like a regular fashion magazine kind of vibe. Yeah. I like, I loved the look. It's just that having a bald head reminds me of being unhealthy. That's my only problem with it. But I thought I was able to pull it off pretty cool. It was like kind of my true self or something from Not when that I was confident. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Really what it is, it's like confidence got a swagger to it, which is really cool. I like it. It's fun. Yeah. I was actually surprised with how confident I was able to be with no hair because I was like a hair model. I had lots of hair. Yeah. Well, it's, I think that's something that's cool to bring up because like, I don't ever think I've seen, seen you outside of whatever, but like not confident rocking your hair like that. Yeah, I, I think, you know, the whole confidence and security thing really went out the window for me when I got sick. I realized what was important. That's so key. Like, I think like it is. And I, and I, I really value that because I remember a time when I wasn't that confident. Do you think that you're more confident now compared to maybe let's say your peak as a model or your prime? Oh yeah, I'm more confident now. What, what would sure. you tell, what would you tell back in the day, Britt, if you could tell her something? Oh wow, like <laughs> enjoy it. Like, <laughs> I don't know, that's tough. Cause I don't know if you, it really takes experience to, to get confidence, I would say. Mm. It really does. You really have to experience what life is really about before you can you, realize why. For you to model like you did before, and people already think that is confidence to another level. But then when you compare it to the yeah. photos that you take now, it's night and day in regards to that confidence level. You know, I might not be as confident after going through that as I am if I, didn't, if I wasn't a model first. Modeling taught me a lot of confidence, confidence too. Like being able to go and run on, like go on the runway is something that isn't as easy the first time as it is after you do it a few times. Yeah, that's cool. All right, let's get into the yeah. next one. All right, Tomb Raider. <laughs> yeah, I, I enjoy shooting guns sometimes. I think it was cool. That was like a badass photo, but it was a bad. Um, my husband loves guns. Okay, do you? Do yeah. You, so he, obviously, does Misha own a couple for sure? Yes. Now that we live in America, we own a few of them. He loves going shooting, and he likes he just likes collecting them too. Um, and we go shooting together. It's something random that we do once in a while, um, and it, and it does feel good, but it's always like these dirty places you have to go so you have to be in the mood it's like uh -huh. but it's, so, it's like to change it up it's fun I but think. i don't shoot animals i can't yeah for sure does, does misha go I hunting can't. um misha's been hunting he went in new zealand okay and it was a really cool experience for him he went with some really experienced hunter guys and they taught him how to like carry the animal and um how to skin the animal and like all that stuff but out there they like they do it to have a living so i actually find it less barbaric you know than buying your meat at the store because 
it's like this whole experience that you go through, you understand the meaning of this life that's been taken and then you There's get, you know, you get your meat in a really difficult way. It's like, takes a lot of work. It's a story. There's a story behind it. Yeah, and there's more value to the meat you're eating. You might not eat meat all the time if you know what it takes to Very properly true. acquire it. I just thought this was a badass photo. <laughs> Thank you. I thought it was too. <laughs> this one. I, I love this photo. Um, this was, you posted this. I think we even talked about this when we first met. And you're like, this was like your first runway shoot or Toronto Fashion Week. Was it Toronto Fashion Week? Or? Yeah. It was Toronto Fashion Week. It's probably like the coolest photo. It's, it's, I think if there's one word to put onto it, it's boss. Yeah. It's such a boss. I was a little insecure that day though, to be honest. Hmm. So I'm, I was like shocked that this picture came out so cool because um, my shirt, my uh, jacket's really open and they had it taped, but not well enough. So the side that I had surgery, I was like really worried that people would be able to tell and I didn't want to freak anybody out. So I remember I was just like walking with one arm moving instead of both. But the picture turned out awesome. It turned out amazing. And it's yeah, it's, so, it's a badass photo. It's very confident. I think I loved what your caption was about, which was strong women empowering anybody in like sort of situations and yeah. being able to overcome struggles and encouraging everybody. And yeah, this I actually recently posted like that because I was nominated by, she's actually the champion of UFC. She's the best hands down female MMA fighter. And she nominated me for this and I thought it was cool. So I played along because I don't always do these types of things. Um, but it was, it was a little bit hard to post something like this during all the things that were going on but women empowerment is so important to me and it's something that i just never turned down that's for sure i think a lot of women look up to you whether it's younger women older women in general because your story reaches and touches so many people on so many levels yeah there's a responsibility at a certain point absolutely and i think when it comes to strong women and encouragement and everything i think this next photo is sums everything up. I think oh, yeah. this is, who is this? Want to tell everybody who this is? That is my beautiful mother. And she actually just had to battle the same breast cancer as me. She is just so on top of things though. She caught it really, really early. So she didn't have to do chemotherapy, thank the Lord, because um, I just can't imagine her having to go through that. Um, but I, yeah, I posted this a, less, a few times now because I just love this photo. She was, she took care of me like every step of the way. She yeah. is my person. I can't, I don't, uh, she's so supportive too. Like ever since we've met, oh. she's so supportive of like, everything yes. that I do at the same time. And yes. She is like the best mom in the world. <laughs> and I can't think, when I think of you, I can't not not think of your mom. Like. I know we're very much alike. <laughs> that first day uh, when we were doing that at uh, Miami Fades, she was just there. We we're just chilling and like just vibing, and it's she's a she's an amazing artist. Yeah. She's an amazing she's, artist. You said she did. Very, so. And um, so she's pretty much is she okay? She's doing well. Yeah, she's doing really really good. It's still frustrating sometimes, you know, because. After you do treatment and everything like that, there is always these like follow up scans and things. So the first, I'd say year, year and a half, you get like so much anxiety and stress from that alone can feel like it's the worst part. But she finished radiation just like I think like a week ago now, um, and I went with her every single day because I just wanted to make it as fun of an experience as possible and just do whatever I could. But I mean, I couldn't go in the hospital during COVID, but just not being alone is way better. Absolutely. You guys are, I, I just had to, I had to end it off with that. I couldn't not. Yeah. Her. Um, so let's, and that's, that's pretty much it. So great. You've been on big, you know, big runways under big lights, you've been in commercials and your own influencer, you've got your own page, you got your own reach, you've got everything. Um, this time now, I'm, I'm honored to give you 
this podcast as the stage. It's all yours. Feel free to say anything you want. Let people know where to find you. Talk about anything you want, pre-sick, advice, whatever it is. It's all yours. All right. Um, well, thank you so much, Wallace. Wallace is an amazing human being. Like For you to reach out the way you did was just something I'll never forget. Um, I didn't make very new friends, like very many new friends during that time. So like, I just love that me and you get to be friends. I love your cooking. You inspire me to do that. So hopefully I can inspire other people the same way. That is like my only thing in life that I really want is to be able to do something that inspires other people to do well and to be healthy. So just keep following my journey at Britt Churchill is my Instagram. That's where I post the most. And then um, I'll be working more on a blog. So I have a website that's on there as well. Um, well, usually I have a link to something on my, my Instagram page. So right now it's for sick kids. So if you want to go there and donate, um, they're sending iPads to kids in the hospital so they can, they met a reach with their friends and their family during COVID. Um, that's like my big thing right now. Um, there's always something on there that I'm passionate about. Otherwise, you can check out my website at brittchurchill.com. And thank you so much, Wallace, for sharing everything with me. It was awesome. Britt, it's amazing. Uh, amazing to not just have you on the podcast, but it's amazing to have you in my life. And, you know, with, with, with mom, Annie, with me, she has been amazing. Um, yeah, life's good. Life's good. Thank you so much for being on episode eight and blessing us with your story. Um, but yeah, guys. All right. This was episode eight, Serving It Up podcast. I hope you guys learned something or anything about this. And please go follow the girl, Britt. You're going to learn something. Until then, have a good one, guys. <laughs>